Now, as you guys can probably expect, I am super excited to bust out my Coffee Lake processors and start to actually test them. But before I do that, you know, I kind of need a motherboard and that's what this thing behind me is for. But before we can actually test those Coffee Lake processors, we're gonna take a look at the ASUS Prime Z370A motherboard. Let's unbox this thing and take a look at what we're working with. Okay, we're gonna move the Coffee Lake processors out of the way because today we're just taking a look at the ASUS Prime Z370A motherboard. And of course it carries that same look, uh, the sort of white and black aesthetic as the X370 motherboard uh, that I actually have in my main rig. So let's go ahead and open up this box, sort of get this thing unboxed here. And of course we're greeted by the motherboard itself. Ooh. And it is kind of in there, there we go. And we're actually gonna set the motherboard aside for the moment and take a look at accessories in the box here. Let me get rid of this cardboard insert as well. We have, of course, the IO shield, pretty standard. It does have a padding on it, which uh, more premium motherboards do tend to have, so nothing surprising there. We have uh, some SATA cables. Looks like we have, this package only has one. Well, that's interesting. Most of the time with ASUS, you get two ones with a right angle connector and two with two straight plugs, but for some reason, this package only has three. So maybe that was just a mistake, but so three SATA cables anyway. You have some brackets here, and these are, these brackets are, or this bracket rather, is for a fan and it looks like it's up towards um, sort of the, uh, the power delivery area, uh, judging from the, uh, the little picture on it. So you have a fan that you can, like I said, it's a fan, uh, you can mount a little fan up uh, by the power delivery, I assume, to give you a little bit uh, better airflow up that way. Next up is the SLI bridge, and it is uh, branded as a Republic of Gamers bridge, even though the motherboard itself is not. So that's a nice touch for those of you that may be going the dual NVIDIA GPU route. We have a CPU installation tool, making processor installation simple. So I assume you clip the processor into the uh, bracket and then you don't have to worry about uh, the alignment of it quite as much. So I assume that's what this is for. I'm probably never gonna use that, but it is a nice inclusion, I guess, especially if you're a first time builder. You have some uh, screws for um, or standoffs rather for uh, probably NVMe drives. Uh, ASUS normally brings this adapter to the table. Let's see if we can get that to focus a little bit. This is a front panel connector adapter. So basically you plug your front panel connectors into this and then this plugs directly into your motherboard so you can sort of do it away from the motherboard and have more room to work with. It's actually a nice inclusion, I really like that. We have a custom uh, cable mod code uh, so cool, probably won't use that. And then of course we have the booklet for the motherboard, the user manual, that's important. Uh, we have a uh, fan installation guide. This is back for the, uh, the bracket, this guy. So we have an installation guide, cool. And we have a driver disc, which is useless to me because A, I have an internet connection and B, I do not have a disc drive on my computer. So useless, but I guess maybe for some people it's important. And now we can clear that away and take a look at the main feature. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna bring that box back so we have something to set the motherboard itself on. And here is the motherboard itself. Okay, so we're gonna start with the back IO. And it looks like we have on the far left side a couple uh, USB 3.1 ports. It looks like a type A as well as a type C. We have a DVI out, a display port out, an HDMI out. Uh, we have a couple USB 2.0, what looks like a couple USB 3.0. We have a gigabit LAN port and of course our audio solution. Now moving along to the top of the motherboard, we have our eight pin EPS connector as well as our heat sinks for our uh, power delivery. It looks like we have a 10 phase power delivery system here alongside our LGA 1151 socket. Of course, this cannot be used for Skylake 
or uh, KB Lake processors. It is only to be used on the Z370 chipset with uh, the new Coffee Lake processor. So it's not backwards compatible, but it is still um, LGA 1151. Moving up to the uh, RAM slots, we obviously have four of those. Um, for those of you familiar with ASUS's solution, the clips are only at the top. And at the bottom, those clips actually, actually do not move at all. We have a couple fan headers here. It looks like one is marked as a CPU and then a CPU optional fan header. We have a chassis fan header over here along this side. We have a couple physical switches. We have a power switch as well as a memory OK switch. So that's good to see. Moving down that right side, we then have our 24 pin connector. Then also here on the right side, we have our six SATA, six gigabit ports, as well as a USB 3.0 header for your case. Now running along the bottom here, we have our front panel connectors. We have an M.2 fan header. Uh, we have a couple USB 2.0 headers and it looks like another 3.0 header along here. Uh, we have the RGB header which I will use at some point, because if you'll notice, I have LED lights in my case. And that looks to be most of the notable sort of ports on the front side. I will point out there is an M.2 uh, slot here, as well as another couple of fan headers up this way. And it's also worth noting, there's an M.2 slot below this heatsink. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and remove this so we can get a better look at that. And as I mentioned, once you get rid of the shield, you do get access to that second M.2 uh, drive slot that you can utilize under uh, the little, I, I guess, it does act as a heatsink. In fact, we have a thermal pad here that uh, when you install your drive, you can peel off uh, the, the backing here and suddenly you have a thermal pad there. So this is a heatsink, uh, probably doesn't look like it has a whole lot of surface area, so it may not do a ton of good, but it will, or at least it should help dissipate a little bit of heat if you utilize that M.2 slot as your primary. And side note here with this other M.2, I really appreciate that uh, it's above the top PCIe by 16 slot because the graphics card won't block air from flowing over that um, M.2 drive. So that's a good to see, uh, well thought out there from um, ASUS on that front. And in case anyone is wondering, this is the backside of the motherboard. No, there is no M.2 on the backside of this particular motherboard, um, even though that is becoming more and more of a common thing. Um, not the case with the uh, Prime Z370A. Okay, now that we have a motherboard acquired and we've already taken a look at that, we can get on to the more interesting task of taking a look at the i3-8350K as well as the i5-8400. So let me know in the comments down below which one of those two processors you are most interested in. Also, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. Those things are all super helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware as usual. And also as usual, we'll let YouTube queue up a few more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.